What's going on YouTube? This is John from Cyborgs. All right, we got a brand new solution to make today. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and populate an array with dynamic values, right? So dynamic values are going to be coming from the sensors behind me, but we're going to populate it in sequence, right? So zero to 10, right? And zero value one, value two, value so on and so forth. All right, to you to actually accomplish this, I'm using a 1200 with a IO link 1100, right? That's connected to the PLC via Profinet. The IO link has a few sensors. I got four of them right here, but I'm actually gonna use only one just to demonstrate the, the, you know, the dynamic values. So we're gonna mess with this a little bit. We're gonna drop it into an array uh, in a time interval. All right, let's get started. All right, so we are back inside of the TR portal. All right, I've already set up this project, right? But I'm gonna walk you through the device setup and I'm gonna walk you through the program. I just I need to save some time on this video. All right, so let's go ahead and go into our devices. As you can see, I have the 1200 right here and I have the IFM IO Master uh, AL1100, right? So the, these are, you gotta, if you're gonna use this device, right? So <laughs> call IFM or check online, right? Cause some of them are used for Ethernet for Alan Bradley, some of them are specific to Profinet, right? The AL1100 is actually specific to Profinet, right? So let me go inside of this device. And inside of the, the IOLink Master, I have four sensors, right? So I'm occupying four ports. Uh, three of the four are analog, basically just analog distance sensors. And one of them is the uh, ultrasonic sensor. All right, so this is this is actually designed for another project that I'm doing. Uh, the sensors are not the distance sensors, right? They're actually temperature sensors. And what the customer wants to do is set up a system that will be accurate to measure on the hour, every hour, the temperatures at each part of the machine, right? So instead of you know operator going in there and making mistakes, right, or or not doing it, right? This thing, the system is doing by itself. So once the back block is populated. The plug gets sent over to the master PLC or gets to send to OPC, right? And data is collected and graphed and all those other stuff. But for here, we're just gonna set up the array. All right, so we have the we have the setup for the hardware. Now let's go ahead and go into our PLC and we're gonna go into the pro program blocks. So as you can see, for just for this demonstration, I have only three things set up. I have the main, I have the value entry function call, and a, and a value entry data block. So let me start with the value entry data block. So this block all, or data, yeah, data block. Uh, the sensor value entry, right, is the array. So this is where we're gonna populate our, we're gonna actually put our values in, in sequence, right? So it's gonna start at one, go all the way through 10, then over to zero, right? And we'll, we'll be able to reset them and it's gonna go every second, at every second interval, right? In the old application, it was every hour, right? So you know, I could just change the timer to one hour and it's fine or 60 minutes or whatever it is, right? But here we're just gonna do it every second just to see the array populate. All right, moving on to the next thing. Uh, we have the, let's go to main. So for this, I have, I'm literally starting sequence, running sequence. Um, I have the function call, the value entry, same, same function call right here. I'm adding a uh, raw sensor value, right? I'm resetting the value and that's it, right? So all I'm doing is just basically populating that data block with this function call, right? And uh, network number three, I have a value reset, but in reality, all I'm doing is filling the block with zero, right? So I'm taking 11 positions of the array and I'm actually sending zero to this uh, value entry data block. That's all it is, right? So I'm just zeroing out the database or the data block. All right, now let's go into our function call. So, all right, let's start off. Okay, well, I build out of four networks, right? I have the sensor data entry, uh, sequence entry time, array index counter, and an array entry. That's it. So let's start with this one. I have the sensor. Uh, I'm, all I'm doing is moving the X1 value, right, which is the sensor value, over to the raw sensor value, right? So this is the temp inside of here, right? So raw sensor value. All right, let's move this up. Network number two. So this is my time interval, right? So every, um, I have two timers here, right? I have one timer that's a primary timer that gives me the time interval and then one just to basically reset it, right? Or put it back to zero. So when I run this, you're gonna see it. All right, moving to the next one. 
All right, so this is the counter. So this is how I'm moving from one index to the next. I'm actually using the counter, right? So I'm, I'm using the time interval, right? When it finished, the timer one, when it finished, it fires off, it goes into the counter, right? The counter keeps counting, right? So the count value is just gonna increment our way up to 11, right? So when, when a value is higher or equal to 11, we're gonna go ahead and reset. Then I added another branch here to reset values, right? That's going back from the main to basically reset the whole thing. So if I stop in, let's say, at an index of five, right? And I, and I wanna reset the whole thing, I just hit reset and resets the whole thing, takes me back to the top. So this is, this is how I'm moving through the array. All right, and then data entry. This one is a hard one. Check this out. <laughs> All right, so we have the in index counter value, right? Count value, right? Which is coming from this, this counter right here. And I'm actually adding a temporary, uh, just a temporary tag, right? Which is index, right? In the second branch, um, I'm taking the raw sensor value and I'm adding to the data block, right? The value entry data block. But instead of adding the address, like 0, 1, 2, right, the index, I'm actually processing the index value that I have from here, this tag, right? So as this tag increments, this value increments, right? So, so counter is going to go in sequence from 0 to whatever, and this thing is going to change from 0 to 11. But when it changes, I push the values into the array. All right, let's go ahead and start this up and see how this works. All right, so we are online with the PLC. As you can see, the value is already starting to populate in array index of zero. So if I flag the array, right, you're gonna see the value change. Now inside of our main, we're gonna go ahead and start it and watch what happens to the array when I start it. Let's run it. There we go. All right, so as I started the, the sequence, right, you're gonna start uh, value being populated. So once again, if we flag it, we got the new values going to the array index by index. All right, we have the reset right here. We're not gonna reset just yet. I'm gonna go into the function call and let's walk through this real quick. So inside a function call, right, we have the value. As you can see, the raw value is getting moved over to the temporary value inside of the function call. And this temporary value is what I'm working with, right? So I don't like going in and messing with the original values, right? Um, I want to work with something that's inside of the function code as, as part of that, right? This this will allow me to change, make changes, you know, and add another function call to, you know, for next sensor, so on and so forth. All right, we're going to go into the sequence entry time, right? So this run sequence is actually getting fired by the main. And it's going to the timer. So I have the timer one, which is a primary timer, and timer two, which is the basically a reset timer for the timer one. Right now I have the timer one set up for one second, but you can set this to 60 seconds, an hour, whatever, whatever you want, whatever the time interval it is. Right? So as you can see, right, timer one is resetting timer two, timer two is resetting timer one. Moving on. All right, uh counter, right? So I'm going to show you why this counter here is important, right? So every time the timer one re, uh, resets, it basically shifts the counter one, right? And then once the counter reaches value of 11, right, it will reset reset back down to zero. So this is how this array is going all the way down, then back up, right? All the way down, then back up. And I have a manual reset, right, that's coming from the main that resets this counter. All right, let's move on. So the array entry, this is the important one. Right, as you can see, the count value is incrementing and I'm pushing this to this temporary index tag, right? So this is just an index tag, nothing special about it. It's just the int tag, right, that's storing this value. But if I if you go to the next move, right, I have the raw sensor value getting moved every time the index passes, right? So if you notice here, I have a, a, value, a value entry data block, sensor value array, and then instead of putting one, zero, whatever it is, I'm actually passing this index tag over, right? So this index tag is like dynamic, right? So uh, this is seven, this becomes seven, eight becomes eight, right? So this is how this is shifting from from one index to the next. You can see it right here, then it goes to here, then it goes, so on, you know, goes down an array. Now let's go ahead and reset it real quick. So I'm gonna stop the sequence. All right, so the sequence stopped right here at five, right? So one big thing is, you know, in my case, 
I was doing it for a shift, right? Shift of eight hours. I do not want to start a, you know, <coughs> excuse me, start a shift at hour five, right? Or array index of five, right? I want to start it at zero and then, and then move down. So if I do a reset, one, I reset out. So I zero out the array, right? With the uh, fill block. And then now when I modify it to zero, you're going to notice the values back at uh, index of zero, right? So this is where the counter was reset alongside with block being filled with zeros. All right, so this is now. Let's start this real quick. Just to go again. There we go. All right, so this is how I set this up right now. I'm sure there's many, many ways to set this up, right? With four call, four loops and all those other stuff. I tried for loop. For loop was just too fast. Uh, it will populate the whole entire thing at once, right? So I needed some kind of a time increment that will actually allow me to be flexible on time. So that's why I use the counter with the time values. But anyways, uh, if you guys want, give me thumbs up. Uh, I would appreciate thumbs up. I would appreciate likes. I would appreciate if you share this. Uh, let me know if you come up with a better way, right? Or easier way, right? This is this is short and sweet, but it's still, to me, it's kind of clunky. I'm sure there's a way to do it even better. All right, guys, have a good day and thank you for watching my video.